Hello there and welcome to our second lesson of our B3 topic, It's All Green. And today we're going to be focusing on keys, being able to identify animals and habitats of where those plants and animals might live. Anyway, I will see you at the end. I hope you enjoy it. Bye-bye. Okay, so our objectives for today's lesson on keys and habitats are by the end of this lesson you should know and understand how to construct a key to identify organisms and the different types of habitat that can exist. Now the point of a key is to be able to correctly identify or classify an organism that you found. Now it can be quite tricky to use and to set one up but what we're going to do is go through uh, how they actually work. Now to start with you need to have a, a certain number of questions that you're going to, going to ask. Now the easiest way is to have very simple answers such as yes and no or red, blue and black um, just so that you can get a key understanding of, of what you're actually looking for. Now the questions should also be based on their appearance as they are and not what they could be like. So we'll start um, first of all by looking at a classification of some uh, some insects. Okay so we can start by looking at the number of legs they have. So it doesn't have six legs. It can either be yes or it can be no. Now once we get to this point we need to think about uh, more questions that we can ask. So we're going to pursue this direction first of all. So the next question we're going to ask is, does it have wings? And the answer can be yes or no. Now, if the answer is yes, it could be a butterfly. Now, if the answer is no, it could be an ant. So we've now been able to follow this key and identify two different organisms. Okay, so what we're going to do now is follow the no side of the initial question. So does it have six legs? And the answer is no. So the next question we're asking is, does it have eight legs? And again, we've got the very simple yes or no answer. Now, if we go down the yes, then it could be a spider. Now, if we go down the no answer here then it could be a centipede. Now we can get them really really quite complex with lots of different variations in the uh, questions and with the with the answers because obviously you know if it does have eight legs it might not necessarily be a spider it could be any type of arachnid which is the group or the family the spider belongs to. Again this one could be a millipede but we've got the idea that we've got very simple questions with very simple answers to then get our organism that we are trying to identify. Now there are quite a few key ecological terms that we need to be aware of and need to have a familiarity with uh, while we go through this topic. Now we're going to look at the first one which is a habitat now, a habitat is a physical environment that plants and animals live. Now, this can vary from a pond to a hedge um, to just a rock under which uh, live woodlice. Now, the size of the habitat can vary as well. Now, the point of a habitat is that it has resources for organisms to, to live. Uh, so they need to be well suited. So the organisms which will be specialised in their own way uh, will have adapted to live in that specific environment and that specific habitat. Um, now the distribution of organisms within that habitat can vary depending on the, the physical things in the environment and the resources that are available. So, for example, in a pond, you might find that there's not an equal distribution of uh, invertebrates in there. They may just be based in 
a certain area where there are lots of plants for them to feed on. Now the next key term is a population. Now a population is purely the number of individuals in a specific defined area. So for example it could be the number of blades of grass in a field, it could be the daisies in a field, it could be the number of wood lice under a rock. Now the next uh, key term is a community. Now community is the total number of individuals within a population and all the populations together. So it could be the uh, all the organisms that live in a particular wood. So you're counting the trees, the foxes, the badgers, everything that is in that specific habitat. Now, the next key term is biodiversity. Now, this is quite a key word. Now, the word bio here means it's to do with any living organisms and the diversity means a variety. So basically, biodiversity means the variety of different species in a particular habitat. Now, the last term we're going to focus on in this section is an ecosystem. Now, this is similar to a habitat. It's the physical environment that plants and animals live, plus all the organisms uh, have, or the physical environment has a specific set of conditions so it could be that you're talking about a aquatic ecosystem that could be a pond or a river you could be talking about a desert ecosystem that would obviously be fairly dry and a lack of rainfall or you could be talking about a woodland ecosystem that may have a selection of different habitats within it now, the key thing with an ecosystem is it can support itself without any influx of external factors, where the only external factor that it can have is the sun. Now, as the name suggests, a natural habitat is something that occurs naturally, which means it is not man-made. However, humans can... Uh, preserve it and influence it. Now examples of natural habitats could include woodlands, which is a natural habitat that could be managed, such as uh, Holden Forest nearby. And another example of a natural habitat could include this lake, um, which examples include the areas of the Lake District that are, again, can be managed but are natural. Now an artificial habitat is, as it says, artificial, which means it's been created and set up. Now because of this it means that the artificial habitat can be controlled and the conditions can be carefully monitored. Now examples of this could be a fish farm such as this one here. Now making a comparison of ecological habitats can be done as we looked at in previous lessons where we looked at sampling. Now if you can first of all identify the plant and animal species there then you can work out the populations and then you can make comparisons between the two habitats. Okay, so to conclude what we have looked at today, we've looked at how we can uh, follow a key and we've also looked at how we can construct a key by using those very, very simple questions with very simple answers. We've also looked at some key uh, terms in terms of ecology, uh, looking at uh, habitats, uh, populations, communities, biodiversity and ecological systems. Now, we've also looked at some examples of some natural and artificial habitats and how we can actually compare them. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.